Video editors aren't happy with Final Cut Pro, and I'm gonna share with you four big reasons why and how Apple can fix this issue. I've noticed a trend lately in the world of video editing that is a bit concerning. And that trend is that not nearly as many video editors are talking as positively about Final Cut Pro as they once were. And when they are talking about it, they're more complaining than sharing things they love about the program. A couple years ago, this wasn't the case. If I posted a YouTube video about Premiere Pro, I would consistently find several comments asking why I'm not using Final Cut Pro, and in the Facebook groups I'm a part of, I would constantly see filmmakers arguing about why Final Cut was superior, either from a lack of crashing standpoint or a speed standpoint because it was faster, etc. Lately though, that hasn't been happening, and it's got me wondering, are video editors not as excited about Final Cut Pro as they once were? So I started asking my friends to use Final Cut, and I think that this word, unexcited, really sums things up well. To be clear, video editors that use Final Cut don't hate the program. No, in fact, many of them have told me that they still love it. But just like how you can love someone through good times and bad, this feels like more of a bad time. And in this video, we're gonna talk about why. Reason one editors aren't happy with Final Cut Pro is because of the secrecy around the program's updates. Apple is a secretive company. We all know that. They do not like revealing any of their hardware or software until it is ready. But in the world of professional software, keeping everything secret can be a bad thing because professionals need to know that updates are coming for the tools that they are using. Because Apple is so secretive about the development of Final Cut Pro, every couple years rumors start to circulate that Apple is going to abandon the program and stop updating it like they did with their photo editing software, Aperture. This culture of secrecy at Apple really makes editors that use Final Cut Pro nervous. They don't need to know Apple's entire roadmap, they just need to know that the editing software that they use is being actively developed and not abandoned. And they need to be told this idea ideally several times per year. This lack of updates about the future of Final Cut Pro software is made all the more apparent whenever you look at Apple's competition in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. Both Adobe and Blackmagic have very healthy beta programs, where they not only tell editors early on that they're releasing updates to their software, they even let them download these beta versions of the software to experience the updates for themselves and give feedback about how to better improve the software. Adobe in particular has been advertising their beta program very heavily recently, where when you open up Premiere Pro, it presents you with a banner at the bottom of the screen talking about how many new features are coming to the program and how you can download the beta to try them today. Heck, they even hired me to make some sponsored Instagram reels for them promoting the features of their new beta. They're being very aggressive talking about their updates to their software right now. And above all, this reassures video editors that both DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro are being very actively developed. And you can expect at least one big update per year, if not multiple, because these companies want to constantly improve their software and add more features. So Apple is secretive about their updates to Final Cut Pro, but they're also inconsistent in their updates as well. And this is the second reason that video editors aren't happy with Final Cut. See, editors on Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve have grown very accustomed to there being new app updates every single year for their software. Typically, Adobe will introduce bigger updates in April or May around the NAB conference and again toward the end of the year, sometime around November or December. With Blackmagic, they release updates throughout the year, even more frequently. And in 2023, nearly every month, there was a new upgrade or tweak of some sort that improves the program. By my rough count, it was like nine or 10 updates. I lost count. Editors have grown accustomed to this year after year. And as someone that uses both Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, I find it very reassuring that I'm consistently seeing updates. And if Adobe were to suddenly announce, hey, uh, we're not gonna be doing updates as often, or Blackmagic said, hey, uh, we're gonna skip a year and not release anything new for DaVinci, I would start to be nervous about the platform. So whenever you look at Apple with an incredibly secretive culture where they do not announce updates, they do not have a beta program where editors can test the software ahead of time, they do not have a regular update cadence that you can expect like their competition, well, 
If DaVinci had seven or more updates in 2023, how many did Apple have? According to Apple's release notes, they had five updates last year, which doesn't sound bad, but then when you look closer, only three of these updates added new features, while the others were smaller bug fixes. And in addition, Apple had a big gap where they didn't release any updates at all between October 22 and May 2023. But really, if you look at that October 22 update, it was really more of a speed and stability update, which means you have to go all the way back to April 2022 to find an update that had a lot of substantial new features added. This is over a year between big feature updates. And so while Final Cut is still getting multiple updates per year, many of these are stability and bug fixes, not so much big feature updates. And this is another red flag that makes it understandable as to why Final Cut Pro editors are not as happy and really excited with the program. It's hard to be excited about a program as a professional if you don't know what's coming and the updates that you are getting aren't substantial. This lack of substance really leads into the third reason that video editors are not happy with Final Cut Pro, and that is the overall lack of big, feature-rich, attention-grabbing updates. Look, we are living in an era of video editing where we're seeing a ton of innovation in the worlds of AI and machine learning that will hopefully make our jobs a lot easier. And Apple's main competition, Adobe Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, have both been extremely good at shouting the benefits of their AI enhanced tools from the rooftops. It feels like every time that Premiere Pro has an update, Adobe is talking about some sort of AI feature that they're just adding to or improving in Premiere Pro. It feels like every time that Premiere Pro has an update, Adobe is talking about some sort of AI feature that they're adding or improving. Premiere Pro just added AI voice enhancement to the program, and Adobe showed off at their Max conference in 2023 that they're working on AI object removal for video, and a generator that can add objects like a tie onto a person while they're walking in mixed lighting using just a text prompt. It's really cool stuff, and it makes me as a video editor, as well as many other video editors that use Premiere Pro, excited about what Adobe is doing. And whereas for a while it felt like everyone was complaining about the bugs in Premiere Pro, now there's a significant portion of the user base talking about AI, which is definitely more positive. Likewise, let's look at DaVinci Resolve. Blackmagic has not been lacking in introducing AI features there as well, with a feature called AI Voice Isolation that will use AI to remove background noise from someone who's speaking and make it significantly easier to hear them. Most editors that I've talked to know about these new tools in DaVinci and Premiere, and I've heard many stories about how these tools have saved a video with audio that would have been previously unrecoverable. But then you have Apple, and their updates aren't nearly as flashy and attention-grabbing in comparison. They have added AI features to Final Cut, don't get me wrong, but I don't see anyone raving about them, or really about any of Final Cut's new features. When I spoke to many of my editor friends that use Final Cut Pro, two recurring themes kept coming up. The first theme was that Final Cut is still by far the fastest way to edit a video, and they absolutely love the speed of the software. But as positive as the first thing was, the second theme was just as negative, because all of these editors consistently said that to make the software work as fast as they wanted it to, they needed to go out and purchase multiple plugins to fill in the gaps where the program was lacking features. In short, Apple hasn't been adding the features that video editors are clamoring for and need. And to make things worse, Apple has been ignoring where their competitor's software is heading. See, an overall shift that we have been witnessing in the wider world of video editing software sphere is the rise of the all-in-one program. Video editors are seeing Adobe add more and more editing features to Premiere Pro that they have pulled from After Effects and Adobe Audition into Premiere to make the editing process quicker. And heck, look at DaVinci Resolve. It's the definition of an all-in-one program that can handle editing and graphics work and color grading and sound mixing all in a few clicks. With my editor friends in Final Cut Pro, they told me how they consistently had to download external plugins that they really wish would be in the program natively, especially for color grading tools like you would find in DaVinci Resolve's color page. This has led to a decent amount of Final Cut Pro editors choosing to edit their videos in Final Cut, but then handle all of their color grading in DaVinci Resolve, resulting in a significantly more convoluted workflow that does work, don't get me wrong, but whenever you combine needing to use DaVinci Resolve for color grading with all the positive word of mouth around DaVinci Resolve and everyone telling you that it's a great editor, it's no wonder that a decent amount of editors are considering switching to DaVinci Resolve to be able to edit and color grade all in one and not use both Final Cut and DaVinci. 
In addition, in early 2024, I released a full featured course called Wedding Film Framework that shows editors how to quickly and easily edit wedding films in DaVinci Resolve. And as people have signed up, I've discovered that there is a decent number of Final Cut Pro users that have joined because they're tired of waiting for these features and they're ready to learn DaVinci Resolve. Incidentally, I will link to my Resolve course down in the description if you want to check it out too. So with this lack of feature-rich updates that professional video editors are looking for in Final Cut, and Apple ignoring this all-in-one editing software trend that their competition is moving towards, that begs the question, where has Apple been spending their time? If they're not releasing super compelling updates for Final Cut Pro, what have they been working on? Well, that is the fourth reason that video editors aren't happy with what Apple is doing with Final Cut Pro. It's no secret that Apple's main driver of income for their entire business is the iPhone and iPad. iOS, and to a lesser degree, iPadOS is the main way that they as a company make money, and where they have been focusing much of their development efforts across their company for years. And what was easily the largest software development for video editors that Apple announced in 2023? Yes a version of Final Cut Pro for the iPad. Look, software development takes a lot of time and Apple has a lot of money, but they do not have unlimited software engineers. And considering that the desktop version of Final Cut Pro is probably not a massive revenue driver for Apple, I would bet that their finance guys looked at how many users they have for Final Cut Pro on desktop versus how many millions upon millions of people own an iPad, and they said, hey, if we can create a version of Final Cut for iPad that is built from the ground up for touch, I'm betting that we can get a lot of these iPad users to use the software. And then to add to this, these same finance people said, look at how little money we're making with Final Cut. Video editors buy it once for 300 bucks and we never make money from them again. Let's take a page from Adobe's book and start charging a subscription of $5 per month to use the iPad version of Final Cut Pro so we can make recurring revenue. So why have Final Cut editors on desktop not been seeing as many updates for their software? Isn't it obvious? Because Apple isn't as focused on them. Many of their engineers are working on the iPad version of their software now because that's where the money is. Look, I'm not saying that development on the desktop version of Final Cut Pro is going to stop altogether, but considering that Apple is a company that wants to make money and they're especially focused on service-based revenue, the potential income they can make from Final Cut editors on desktop is very small. And I don't necessarily see that changing unless they were to start charging for updates or more likely to start charging a subscription fee for the desktop version of Final Cut. And don't get mad at me about this, okay? I hate subscriptions just as much as you do, but this isn't coming from me. Apple is the one that is already charging for a subscription for their iPad version of Final Cut. It's not a big jump at all for them to say, hey, we should do that for the desktop version as well. Regardless of whether they do that or not, the fact doesn't change that their attention is now split between the iPad and desktop versions of Final Cut Pro. They are now going to be updating and improving two versions of their software, one of which needs to work as a completely touch interface. Traditional video editors on desktops and laptops are probably not going to be thrilled about this because up until now, it has meant longer development time for updates to their version of the software, and I'm not sure that I see it changing. But who knows? Maybe Apple is getting ready to fix all of these issues that video editors have with Final Cut. Maybe they're about to announce a new public beta program. They're going to start sharing their roadmap for future updates, roll out bigger feature updates that will grab hype and attention from video editors, and overall shore up any of their other deficiencies that have editors looking towards other software. Or maybe they'll continue to rest easy, knowing that they're still one of the fastest ways to edit video out there, even with all their shortcomings. If so, then it's not surprising why video editors aren't happy with the program anymore. Can I tell you something that you will be happy with though? My free guide called Edit Videos Like a Pro. This guide is gonna show you some of the most important things that I've learned after years of editing videos, and I'm so happy to tell you that the things that I teach in it will apply regardless of which video editing software you use, including Final Cut. You can download this guide for free at the link down below. And while you're down there, I would love to hear your comments on this. Do you use Final Cut? Are you happy with the program? Are you unhappy with it? A lot of people that I talked to said that they loved the program, but they weren't excited about it. They used it and they were familiar with it, but at the same time, a lot of editors are hearing all the hype and excitement around at programs like DaVinci Resolve and they're thinking, huh, Final Cut's cool, but I don't know, DaVinci Resolve's pretty neat. Is that you? 
Let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what you think Apple can do to fix this. It's really interesting stuff. Also, if you want to do a deeper dive about how video editors that use Premiere Pro feel about it, there's another video that I would highly recommend watching from Eric Linz, and it's called Cutting Edge Moving Slow, the Final Cut Pro Conundrum. And it's really well done, and he interviews a ton of editors about why they're not excited about Final Cut and what it's lacking. I'll link to his video down in the description as well. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great day. Thank you.